Hello and welcome back. This is video 3 in a 4 part video series where I'll be showing you how to create a high poly X-Wing. And in this video we'll be doing, we'll be modeling all the shaded parts you can see right here. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is just adding some holding edges to the engine. And then I'll move all the engine parts and the wing to a separate layer, uh, layer 2, just so I can, you know, organize properly. Okay, so I'm just going to give this wing a material, just a, just a blank material. And then I'll switch to cycles, and then with everything selected, the wing being the active selection, I'll do Control L, and then I'll um, link to material. And there you go. I just like to model with this. And actually, for this engine, I'm going to take down the vertices to 16, and I'll explain why when we get there. Okay, so the reason why we changed it to 16 verts is so we can model this, um, I don't exactly know what you call this, but this, uh, you know, this right here, the end part of this engine. To do this, I'm actually going to make it a separate object, so I'm going to select these over here, and then uh, just hit P and separate by selection. And then to this part over here that we want to be a little more smooth, I'll just give this a uh, subdivision of 2 by control number 2. But we can view it at 1. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to show you a real helpful trick over here. I'm going to select all of these faces, all these faces, and then I'm going to search, especially in spacebar, extrude individual faces and move. With the selected, I'm just going to scale it out to about to about there, maybe a little less. Mm, up there looks good. Then I'll just grab these and bring them over here. And then I can take this and scale this down. Actually, let's start scaling it down only about here. Just like that. And there we have it. That looks cool. Okay, so now what I'll do is, just to make this a little neater, I'll grab these and extrude it on the y-axis. Bring that in to about there, and then I can just fill it like that. But I'm not too worried about this. I won't be adding a subdivision surface or... Um, anything like that, so I'll leave it like that. Okay, I'm going to show you a real cool trick over here. Um, and I went about a year without without knowing this, and I suffered greatly. If I knew this when I first started Blend, I would have saved myself a lot of work. I'm just going to add this circle here. We can be making this this wire or pipe you can see running over here. And this actually isn't in any reference images, I just thought it would be cool to include this so I can show you this um, this trick using th using something called a Bezier curve. And it's over here, the Bezier curve. Okay, but with this circle, it doesn't have to be very big, so I'm just going to make it 12 verts, and then I'll rotate this on the x-axis 90 degrees. And then I'll put this just to where we want our pipe to to begin. Uh, where's my engine? There it is. It just something like that looks good. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit Shift C, and then I'm gonna place my cursor to selected. And then I'll add in my curve. Where is it? A uh, curve is here. Okay, then I'll rotate this ninety degrees. Uh, that's right. And then I'll scale all the way down to about there. Okay, then I also want to position this first line over here on my circle's point of origin to about there. Then we can start curving this up. Like that, oh, it's so low. It's not supposed to be so low. Actually, it is. That's just my. Let's move the whole thing up. Okay. All right. Okay. 
you're then always going to follow the path. Okay, so I'm going to select the circle. Circle select, I'll extrude it to the end of our Bezier curve. And I'll add about 20 uh, loop cuts, just like that. In the modify menu, I will add modify and then curve. And I'll select the curve, which is um, the only curve we have here, the Bezier curve. Just selecting that, let's go into object mode. You can see it's automatically taken on the shape of this curve we just added. And the cool thing about this as well, is once we've applied the modifier, we can still open up the curve and edit the curve. Uh, very nice to do like this. So that's real nice. Okay. That's real cool. Okay, so this... Our circle. Cylinder is a little short, so let's extend that to about there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. It's longer this way as well just like that that's cool yeah okay so i'll apply this zero curve over here and yeah that's good now we can delete the curve we're not using it but you don't have to um we could, could keep the modifier on but i'll leave it like this i think that looks right that looks nice okay so i can move this to the second layer i moved it to the third third layer just so I can, my computer runs a bit faster, a lot of geometry here. Okay, let's position this, just so it's resting on here nicely like that. Yeah, that looks cool. Actually, this isn't going on here nicely. Okay, so let's move on to the laser gun. I'll go into layer 3 and then add in a circle. I don't know if it's a laser gun, I don't know what kind of gun it is, but I mean the gun. And then vertices, I'll make this the ordinary 32. Actually, maybe we should make it 16 so we can model this. Now. Yeah, let's make it 16. We'll be doing a similar thing than what we did at the engine over here to this. Um, I don't know what this is. I suppose maybe it's um, just metal bars to let some heat escape. I don't know what it's for, but anyway. Yeah, so we need not too much geometry for those. Notice I scaled this pipe here um, straight from this uh, because all of these, well, whatever this is, is going to be a separate object. Okay, so now to do these things here, I'm just going to position this loop cut where these are going to end. Then, like similar to the engine, I'm going to select these and then extrude individual and move. I'll scale these up to about uh, about the height of this, just there. Then I'm going to hit the plus uh, shift uh, control plus, sorry, and then I'll just hit P and separate selection. Actually, instead. I have a better idea. That didn't work, did it? Wait, 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 wait. It worked. It did work. I'm just going back to this object over here and then 
uh, using uh, Control Z to undo. I was able to undo all of that. So I, now we have these, and we don't have to deal with blocking up that and these faces over here. But uh, anyway. Alright, so I think that's it for the gun. Actually, I think that's it for the whole wing. Is it? Uh, no, we still have to add these wires over here, so I'll do that quick. Okay, so that's all the modeling for the wing done. And the last thing to do is um, duplicate it and then flip it on the X and the uh, Z axis. But in order to do this, what we need is all of our objects to have a common uh, point of origin or else once we flip it, it'll be in weird places and we don't want that. So with everything selected, I'm just going to first put my cursor to the center by Shift S and then cursor to select cursor to center. And then I'll hit Shift S again. Oh no, sorry, I'll just spacebar and search set origin. And then I'll say origin to 3D cursor. And you can see over here something weird um, happened with my, this whatever this is. So I'm just going to undo that. And this is because I have a mirror, mod, a mirror modifier over here. So I'll just apply that and do the same thing again. Set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now I can flip these with these. Actually, first let's take this background image to zero rotation then rotate this up to about there okay so now I'm going to duplicate this and then right click and then drop it down to about there and then S uh, X Z minus one and I can rotate this over there what that did was just um flip it yeah there you go just flip it then I'll grab these and likewise um, alt D. Wait, did I Alt D that or did I Shift D that? What I wanted to do. Well, let me just test. Uh, I Shift D it. I wasn't supposed to Shift D it. Let me just undo that. Reason being, I want to create a linked duplicate instead of a duplicate. The only difference being, well, it's linked. Well, obviously, but I'm going to Alt D this, and then do the same thing. Uh, flip it and then go down and I didn't finish my description of what link duplicate is if I finish and Now as you, you can notice if I wanted to change something on this Like extrude this it'll apply to both of the objects But I wouldn't want to do that. So let's just undo that Okay, let's grab those link duplicates alt D right click 
s x minus one, and the rotation has gone all gone all weird. So we just how am I going to separate these? Actually, I should do it separately. Okay, I should do it separately. Select, select this one. Alt D S X minus one. Rotate it all the way up. I think this might have been easier if we were to do it on a on the, when the, when this wing was still horizontal. But anyway, we started it now, so same thing with this one. Okay, that looks nice. Yeah, everything still looks good. Nothing's shifted around. Okay, but now problem. All of our origin points are in the center over here. But just by selecting everything and then spacebar set origin, we can say select origin to geometry and it'll send it back to where it's supposed to be. All right, so yeah, I think that's it for this video. Um, in the next video should be our last video. We'll just be doing some final changes to this main body over here. Um, the cockpit, of course, and the nose, which are two of the hardest um, things to model on this X-Wing, which is weird, well, at least I found that. And then, yeah. That's it. So if you found this video helpful, then please um, like it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm putting out a bunch of Blender videos. And I already have a, some cool ones. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.